glorified, oh God, in the earth. Be glorified in our praise. Be glorified as we lift your name on high. You are God and you reign. You are God and you are in control. You are God and you hold all things together. You are God and we praise you. We surrender to you. We give our lives to you, O oh Lord. And we acknowledge that you're not just God. You're God Almighty, all powerful. You are Abba, our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that you know each one of us by name. Thank you, Lord. You know the very number of hairs upon our head. Thank you, Lord, that your thoughts are numerous of us. Thank you, Lord, that we cannot escape your presence. For you are God, and you love your children. You are God. And we can trust you. You are God. And we can call on you. And we call on you right now because this world needs you. The church needs you. Lord, we make it even more personal. We need you. And I need you. May your word speak to each and every one of us today. May we be encouraged. May we be strengthened. May we be edified. And in all that we do, all that we say, may you be glorified. In the mighty, matchless name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, let all the beloved people of God say amen and say amen. Give God praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Give God praise right where you are. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Give God praise. Praise him because God is worthy. Praise the Lord. And you know, there's not just one way to praise the Lord. You could praise him with a foot stomp. You could praise him with a hand clap. You could praise him by lifting up your voice unto the Lord. You could praise the Lord through dance. You can praise the Lord through instruments. But the psalmist says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So why don't you give God praise right where you are in your living room. Get out your bed for a moment and give God praise. Hallelujah. For the Lord is worthy. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going of the same. God is worthy on a cloudy day, on a rainy day. God is worthy. Glory to his name. We bless your name, Lord. Yes. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who said you got to be in the sanctuary to dance? Hallelujah. Who said you got to be in the sanctuary to lift up your voice? Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Stop your feet. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah. Come on right where you are. Right where you are. inhabits the praises of his people. Yes, glory to, glory to his name. I'm sorry, I needed that. That was for me this morning. Even with back pain, I can't let nothing hinder my praise. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Imani family. Good morning, visitors, friends of Imani Church. Thank you for joining in with us. Whether you join in with us every Sunday or this is your first time worshiping with us this morning, we thank you for taking the time to tune in. And if you are new to our streaming, why don't you just say so and let the Imani Church people love on you. Amen. Amen. If there are any visitors on our live stream this morning, just say so and our Imani family again will love on you. I am grateful and thankful to be in the land of the living. Amen. That means God is not through with me yet. But the fact that you woke up this morning, it means that God is not through with you. There's still work to do. There's still things for us to learn, places for us to go, people for us to meet. So I pray that we do not take this day for granted because there are many people who did not wake up to see this day. But the Lord still has a work for you to do. And so that's why we give God praise. We give God praise. Amen. And we got to remember to give God praise in the midst of all that's going on in the world. The West Coast, all those forest fires, my Lord, my Lord. People are losing their homes and their, their possessions and over 30 lives, I believe 30 lives have been lost in those fires. And so we just lift up those on the West Coast who are suffering the, um, any form of loss. People have lost loved ones. Um, I only personally know one person who has died of COVID, but I know a lot of folks, quite a few folks who have died of other diseases and causes. And so we just lift up those who are mourning and grieving, whether it's through COVID or whether it was heart disease or it was some kind of accident or tragedy. Do know that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, that our God is a comforter, our God is a healer, and may God be with you. There are some of you out there this morning, and you've been worried, and you've been weary, you've been fretful, but let me tell you, God already knows what you stand in need of, and you just got to believe by faith that God is able. Don't forget to call on the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Don't forget to call on the name of the Lord. Don't forget to just ask the Lord. Let him know what you need. And God has a way of touching the hearts of people around you to show up for you just at your point of need and your time of need. So we just lift up one another this morning. If you're somebody and you're in a season of peace, you need to really rejoice and give God praise. Amen because everybody's not in a storm. And so we just thank God no matter where we are, whether on the mountain, whether in the valley, even if in a dark place, we praise God because God does not stop being God because of what we're going through. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. I'm going to ask you, of course, as I always do, I'm going to ask you to please share this video. You can share it right now. There's a share button or you can share it at the end of this worship service. Amen. And then we do also ask that you will give to this ministry, whether it's a tithe or whether it's an offering, that we may continue to do the work of the Lord. Although the doors of the church have been closed to the gathering of worshipers, ministry still continues to go on and needs continue to be met. And so please give to this ministry and we thank you in advance. I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah the 29th chapter. Isaiah the 29th chapter. And while you're looking for the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, we want to just give God praise for Elder Jay, who just celebrated his 48th birthday. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Amen, amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Birthdays are to be celebrated. Amen. Isaiah 29, verse 13. Isaiah 29, verse 13. I'm waiting on you. You hold me up right now. Hurry up and turn. Isaiah 29, 13. You know who I'm talking about. The Lord says, 
These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up of only rules taught by men. Let me reread verse 13. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. God has blessed the reading and hearing of his holy word. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, we are gathered together from various places, gathered together by your spirit. We've come together to worship you. We come together to hear a word from you. We ask, Lord, that you speak to us, speak to us with clarity, no riddles. Make your word plain. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will speak to the depth of our soul. And we pray, O oh God, that after we've heard your word, that the Spirit will begin to do work in each and every one of us, that we may be transformed, more transformed to the image of your Son. We thank you in advance that when your word goes forth, it will not return void. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Let the beloved people of God say amen. This morning, I want to entitle this message, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. One of my favorite songs from the 80s was from a group known as Atlantic Star. The song was entitled, If Your Heart Isn't In It. Anybody remember that song from the 80s? The lyrics in the chorus says, if your heart isn't in it, why can't you tell me so? If my heart wasn't in it, I'd have gone long ago. If your heart isn't in it, why keep me hanging on? Just tell me and I'll be gone from your life. The song is a duet in which the couple struggles through their relationship. And they begin to question whether the other's heart is in it. The question is not answered in the song, but it is obvious that something went wrong in the relationship. The assumption that the other's heart isn't in it may be an indicator that somehow, in some way, the two of them have become disconnected. They've lost their oneness. They've lost their passion and desire for one another or the relationship. Maybe the relationship simply lacks emotion, no intimacy, no warmth, no affection, no joy, no excitement. Maybe someone in the relationship is no longer feeling the relationship not feeling the way that they did in the beginning, not feeling complete like they used to. Any of you know anything about not feeling it? About to walk out the door on a relationship because things are not what they used to be? And they're not, not feeling your job anymore, the job that you prayed for, the job that gives you a decent income, yet something has changed. Not feeling life anymore. You've lost your joy, lost your drive. Before the pandemic, you weren't feeling church anymore, just didn't do anything for you, no connection to the worship or were or, or worse you're not feeling God no zeal no fire <clears throat> no passion or desire for the things of God like you once had what is your it 
that you're no longer feeling because your heart isn't in it like it once was. I'm going to let you think about that for a second. In our passage this morning, the Lord has a rebuke for his people. He says through the prophet Isaiah, these people, notice he doesn't say my people at this moment, but these people, they come near to me with their mouth and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It is clear that God isn't feeling their worship. Despite their words and despite their actions, there is an absence of heart, which reveals to us that God wants to feel the love that we profess and confess. God wants to feel our worship. Some of you are in that place right now in your personal life. You want to feel something. And it's the same with God. The Lord says, love me with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. In other words, love me with your entire being, not just a part of you, but love me with all of you. Love me from the depth of your heart and from the depth of your soul. Love me even with your mind, in your thoughts, and in truth. We serve a God, beloved, who feels. The Bible refers to God as a jealous God. For God, I want you to understand, is not a heartless and emotionless God, but rather one who has great love and great compassion for his people. And when God created, created us, I want you to understand this, when God created us, God created us for relationship. Not because God needs us, not because God was lonely or is lonely, but God is complete within himself, but he created us to share himself with us. Do you realize, beloved, the magnitude, and I'm talking to you specifically, do you realize the magnitude of God's love for you? Do you realize the sacrifice made for you? Do you understand the depth of God's love for us, a love seen in his grace, seen in his mercy, and in the sacrifice of his son for our salvation, which is why when we've been unfaithful, God is still faithful. That's why when we mess up, God is still merciful. And when we fall short, grace abounds. It's because of the depth of God's love for us. Yet in all that God does for us in his patience, in his faithfulness, in his grace, and in his mercy, it is not for us to remain distant from God but to love God in return. Some of you think heaven is the reward. You said yes, just so you can get into heaven, but the reward ain't heaven, the reward is God. It's God. And God wants us to love him in return, a love that is not only in response to what he has done for us, but a love for who God is that grows and develops in the midst of our walk with God as we allow God into our life, as we allow him into our world, as we allow him into our personal space, and ultimately into our hearts. But the problem is many of us don't know what it means to love God or how to even love God. And when people don't know how to love you, you do understand you got to teach them how to love you, especially when you are married or in a committed relationship. You, you have to teach people how to love you and teach people how to treat you because if you don't, they will treat you any kind of way. You have to set a standard because you love yourself too much to settle for less than you deserve. And that applies to friendships. Just because we are friends doesn't give you license to overstep, overstep boundaries or to drag me into your mess. It applies 
advice to co-workers just because you are my supervisor doesn't mean that you can talk to me any kind of way it applies to church folks just because you are a leader or have a title doesn't give you the right to talk down to me there's got to be a standard for what you are willing to accept and for what you refuse to accept and somebody out there needs a standard for the relationships that you are in and it is in this passage where it becomes obvious that God has a standard for how we are to love him. In fact, in the Old Testament, God has a standard for worship, a standard for how we are to approach him. He, he taught the Israelites how. Read Exodus, read Leviticus. He taught the Israelites how to worship him and with specific instructions. If he was to be their God and they were to be his people, he would protect them, provide for them, and bless them, and they would worship him and worship him alone. And so the people learn how to worship God in their sacrifices. They learn how to worship God in their giving. They learn how to live for him, and they learn how to worship him by their actions, just like you learn some things in life. You learn how to be a wife or learn how to be a husband depending on your spouse's needs, spouse's needs or what you witness in your home. You learn how to be a mother or a father. You learn how to take care of a child and to raise a family. We learn how to love based on what we have seen, what we've witnessed or been taught, which is why many of our relationships are dysfunctional because we have not always had the right model of what love is and what love does and what love looks like. And as born-again believers in Christ, we learn what it means to follow Christ. Therefore, an element of life is learning and doing. Let me repeat that. An element of life is learning and doing. And we go through life doing. Doing what is expected. Doing what is acceptable. Doing our responsibilities. Doing what is required. And eventually, you become so accustomed to doing that you don't realize that what you do lacks energy, lacks passion lacks motivation or even lacks joy because life has become a monotonous routine who am I talking to wake up dress the kids shower get dressed drop them off to school go to work perform your duties get off work pick up the kids cook dinner help with homework get them in the tub put them to bed and repeat it again tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that brothers how many of you are just doing doing what it takes to get through the day just doing enough to maintain peace in your home doing what you need to do at work to get your paycheck just doing and how many of us dare I ask how many of us learn how to do church you learn the do's and the don'ts. You learn the language and the lingo. You learn the right posture, the right stance, and the right time to say amen, and the right time to lift up your hands. You learn to do what you have been taught. And so I find the Lord's complaint, I find the Lord's complaint quite interesting in the text. He says, these people come near to me with their mouth, and they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. And this can become confusing because they are doing the right things. They're doing the right things. They are saying all the right things. But God isn't feeling their worship. Uh, okay, let me say it again. They're doing the right things. They are saying the right things, but God isn't feeling their worship. Because as he says, your heart isn't in it. And if truth be told, you can do all the right things and say all the right things in your relationship. And somewhere down the line, you're not feeling it. 
You've lost your heart connection. Any real folks out there, you're doing all the right things. You're cooking dinner, you're washing clothes, you're cutting the grass, you're working and you're paying the bills, but you're not feeling it. You're showing up to work every day, doing the work that you're paid to do, giving your best, but you're not feeling it. You're walking in your calling, serving faithfully, praying every day, but you're not feeling it. Somehow we learn to do. We learn to do even with an absence of heart. In other words, our actions have become nothing more than formality. And God is saying in the text, don't just do the right things and say the right things if your heart isn't in it. And Jesus quotes these very words from Isaiah in Matthew 15. And what this reveals to us is that our relationship with God must be more than just doing the right thing. It has to be more than just our obedience. I'm glad that you're part of a church. Glad that you serve in a ministry. Glad that you give faithfully to the church that we may be able to do ministry. Glad that you attend Bible study. But you can do all those things and your heart still be far from God. God wants worship. That is an expression of our passion and desire for God. God doesn't want us just singing songs and lifting up holy hands. God wants our hearts. And how many of us are simply going through the motions? We learn how to do. And in the midst of doing, our hearts became less involved. And now I am at a point where I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling feeling it. I'm not feeling it on my job. I'm not feeling it in my church. I'm not feeling it in my relationship. I'm not feeling this motherhood or this fatherhood. I'm not feeling it when I pray to God. I'm not feeling life because it has become mundane. It has become um, familiar. It has become repetitive and it has become rehearsed. The same thing, just a different day. God tells the people, God is saying to us, I want your heart. I want your heart. Because see, if I got your heart, I got everything else. I, I, want, I, got your, I want your heart. In Revelation chapter 2, verses 2 through 4, God says to, to the church in Ephesus, write that scripture down, Revelation 2, 2 through 4. He says to the church in Ephesus, Ephesus he says, I know your works. I know your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. He goes on to say, you have persevered and have patience, and you have labored for my name's sake, and you have not become weary. God says all these wonderful things about the church in Ephesus. God compliments them on their faithfulness. But then he says this. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you've left your first love. <laughs> Beloved, our work cannot replace our worship. God does not just want us serving him. Second Sunday, Third Sundays, the day I usher, I got to go to church. We're not slaves. We're not hired help. God wants us to love him. And he says, with your heart, with, my, with, with, your, heart, with your soul, with your mind, and with your strength. And let me say, and not just with church attendance. You can go to church and not even see God. You can know the words to the songs and your mind is on the other side of town. And so the question is, what, what happened? What happened? Where did our heart grow cold? Where did our love grow old? When did our heart check out. 
How many of us are simply going through the motions with God with a, or going through the motions in a relationship or going through the motions with life? No motivation, no passion, no heartfelt desires. Three things to reconnect your heart when you're no longer feeling. This is not going to be a jump for joy, shout, hallelujah message. Three things to reconnect your heart when you're no longer feeling it. Number one, discover what the it is. Discover what you're, you're no longer feeling it. Again, number one, discover what the it is. What is it that you're not feeling? Are you not feeling loved yourself? Are you not feeling valued or validated? Are you not feeling like your efforts are making a difference? Are you bored? Are you tired? Do you feel like you're not getting anywhere, that you're putting all this time, this energy, and effort, but yet you are not making progress? Have your needs and your desires changed? You have to give your it a name. You got to give your it a name. If you don't name it, then you cannot address it. And it is in your time of personal reflection and meditation where you have honest dialogue with yourself that you may have honest dialogue with God. We are emotional beings. We feel and at times we don't feel. If we aren't careful, we can become emotionally numb. And when our heart is no longer engaged in what we do, then it creates a problem that, you know, we can't just overlook. God doesn't want you to go, just go through the motions. It's not fair to you. It's not fair to the person you're in relationship with. It's not, it's not um, fair to your children. It's not fair to your church. It's not fair to you. And it's not fair to God. My brother, my sister, you can't just check out emotionally. God gave you a heart to feel, to love, to desire, and for passion. So, number one, discover what the it is. Is. You're not feeling it. What is it? Number two, find ways to reconnect. Find ways to reconnect. When you have lost connection, you have to discover how to reconnect. Sometimes we don't even realize we're just going through the motions. We've done what we know to do for so long that it becomes second nature to us. Some of us have the exact same routine that we've had for years. Every day looks like yesterday. The same pattern of behavior. How many of you at, at times drove home from work and didn't remember the actual drive? It was like you were on autopilot. Because you've driven it so much, you're on autopilot. And that's what happens when you lose heart. You live life on autopilot. And in some of our relationships with God, it's on autopilot. But what we have to discover is how to reconnect to God. How to reconnect in your relationship. How to reconnect with your children. How to reconnect with life. And you do so by changing the rules. You do so by doing things differently. You do so by rejecting the familiar with something unfamiliar in order to develop a new level of engagement, excitement, and passion. All the times my relationship with God has gone dry in my life became an opportunity for me to know God on a different level and to seek God in a different way. Sometimes you lose heart because things have become simply just too familiar. How can you pray to God differently? Worship God differently. Serve God differently. Some of you just need to, when, when churches return, just get off that ministry you've been on for 30 years. How do you reconnect to God? by seeking God in new ways, by rejecting the routines you've grown accustomed to and allowing your heart to reconnect with God by first acknowledging to God that you want to know God better. 
that you want to know the Lord in a different light. And then you got to seek God with all your heart, soul, and mind. When you seek him, you will find him. It's the same for marriage. Do something different. Escape somewhere, just the two of you. Learn each other over again because chances are, especially if you've been married a long time, that the person that you married 15 years ago or 20 years ago is not the same person. Reconnect to life by breaking out of your box. Do something that you've never done before. Try something new. Get a new hobby. Make some new friends. Break outside your comfort zone. Find something that you can be passionate about. God gave you a life to live and a life to live with heart. So number one, discover what the it is. Number two, find ways to reconnect. And lastly, the third thing, and this one is so important, and I'm, I'm one who's speaking from experience. Remain committed even when your heart isn't in it. Remain committed even when your heart isn't in it. And what I mean by that is this. Just because your heart isn't in it doesn't mean that what you lack emotion for is not worth fighting for. I'm, I'm gonna say that for you, those who dozed off for a second because you're still in bed. Just because your heart isn't in it doesn't mean that what you lack emotion for is not worth fighting for. You cannot always trust your heart to make life altering decisions. Just because you're not feeling your marriage doesn't mean that you walk out on it. Or because you're not feeling motherhood or fatherhood that you bail out on your responsibilities. Or that you quit your third job in one year because you're not feeling it. Sometimes, let me say this clearly, sometimes commitment and covenant overrides feelings. Because feelings fluctuate. Did you get that? Sometimes commitment and covenant overrides feelings because feelings fluctuate. Feelings are up and down. Feelings can be seasonal. I don't always feel like pastoring. And there were times when my heart wasn't in it. When I was a single mother, I didn't always feel it. But I'm glad I never bailed. I'm glad I never walked out. I'm glad I never gave up. I'm glad that I learned how to make it through the highs and lows. Sometimes we're not feeling it. And at times we can't even express what we feel or what we're not feeling. And even in our relationship with God, listen, Jesus died for us for the sake of relationship. I'm going to keep saying that relationship, not rituals. He died for us for the sake of relationship, and God is faithful to our covenant relationship even when God doesn't give back the love or the worship or the commitment that he so deserves. Yet God extends grace and he extends mercy daily, and God is looking for us to be faithful to our covenant relationship with him. Uh, don't you know that God is greater than just church attendance, uh, that he's greater than just a prayer. He's greater than just our rituals. God wants us to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. And even when we are not feeling God for whatever reason, it's not a call to walk away, but rather an opportunity to reconnect to God, to recommit to God, and to renew our relationship with God. If you are a born again believer, if you have been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, if you've said yes to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have entered into a covenant relationship with God. Now, 
When I married my husband 14 years ago, I'd entered into a covenant relationship with him for better or for worse, for richer and for poor, and sickness and in health. We have entered into a covenant that keeps us committed to our vows and to one another. Marriage takes work. Two imperfect, flawed people coming together creates an imperfect and flawed relationship. So we may not always be at our best. We may not have butterflies every time we look at each other because our relationship is much deeper than just emotions. Yet we understand that it's more than just doing, but it is remaining as one in the relationship. It's remaining one in heart and one in soul and one in spirit. And in our covenant relationship, our relationship with God, we must maintain our part in the relationship despite our feelings. Yet understand this, beloved, that no relationship can survive without the heart being engaged. So if your heart isn't in it, don't give up. If your heart isn't in it, don't walk away. If your heart isn't in it, you need to talk to God. Maybe your heart isn't feeling it because it seems as if God is absent in your life. Whatever the reason may be, you've got to pray. You've got to seek God's face. You've got to reintroduce yourself to God again. You may have to renew your commitment to God. You might have to unlearn all the things you've learned. And you got to have your own relationship. Don't you know, saints of God, that your relationship doesn't have to look like my relationship. You don't have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to have time with the Lord. Your time may be on your way to work. Your time may be in the midnight hour. You may have think that you got to go to church 52 weeks of the year, but yet somebody knows whether I'm in the sanctuary or whether I'm in my bed. I've got a connection with God that's not based on location, but based on relationship. Don't run away, beloved. Just like God has been faithful to you, remain faithful to God. Even when God ain't feeling you, God is still loving you. And I don't know about you, but that's why I stay committed. And that's why I hang on, because can't nobody love me. Love me like Jesus. Ain't nobody going to put up with me the way the Lord does. And if the Lord gives me his best, as he has done with his son, then surely I can keep pressing on. I don't know who I'm talking to. But the Lord is saying, it's not about Hail Marys. It's not about whether you tithe off every check. Or whether you serve once a month or once a quarter. It's about connecting heart to heart. Sharing who you are with the one that's giving you life. It's about intimacy. Into me you see. It's about removing the fig leaves that we may draw closer to God. So keep hanging on in there. If you're not feeling it, just see God in another way. And just as God has said in this word, yeah, you're saying the right things. You're doing the right things. But your heart is far from me. God never turns his back on them. God is patient with us. God is long-suffering with us. Because God loves us that much. There's someone here or someone viewing
And this message was a struggle for you personally because you didn't want to admit that you weren't feeling it anymore. And God forbid you talk to another believer and tell them you're not feeling it because then they're going to crucify you. But you'll be amazed how many folks go through the motions at home, at work, and even at church. But today, may God give you fresh eyes to see them. And may God give you new experiences. And may you see God like you've never sought God before, right where you are. This is an opportunity why the doors of the church are shuttered, that you can seek God in your personal space. Invite God into your life. Invite God to your home. You know how it is when you invite people over, you try to clean up real quick, or you hide all the dirt, or you hide all the, the clothes, and don't try to hide from God. Just let God in. Let God love you where you are. And the thing about God is God will help you clean up. He'll go through your home and help you to clean up and clean up your life. The doors of the church are open. If you're somebody listening today and you do not have a relationship with God, you can have one. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That is the beginning of a relationship that begins right now and lasts for eternity. Will you say yes to the Lord? Do you know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life? That's love. That's love. Will you say yes this morning? And if you are receiving Jesus Christ into your life and into your heart for the very first time, we invite you to inbox us right there on the Minor United Church of Christ Facebook page. Let us know that you are receiving the Lord. Give us your name and, and phone number or email address. Let us know. If you're someone and you just desire to become part of the Imani Church, whether you desire to join our local fellowship or become part of our virtual church. There's a form on the Imani Church website, imanichurch.org. Go there, fill out the form, and someone will be in contact with you during the next several days. We love you. We welcome you. But more importantly, God loves you, and God welcomes you to an eternal relationship. Thank you for joining in as we prepare for the praise team to return. We do ask that you consider giving to our ministry. You could give at imanichurch.org. You could give through Givelify, a phone app, or you can text to give, and that information is going to come up on our screen shortly. As the praise team comes, be sure to Share this video when you leave off, when you leave out for somebody who may be able to be blessed by it. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. God bless you, beloved. God bless you.